let's let's wind the clocks back. How oh, far? Start of the season. <laughs> John Ward's just finished doing a miracle job of we went on a massive run last season. Uh win after win we got gorged on wins, didn't we? At the end great. of the season we did, yeah. Yeah. Fabian Broghammer, all set for the season. This was the season he was gonna prove himself. Bought well over the summer. Um a couple of injuries, but it seemed fine. Mm. Brunt ready to to rock our worlds. I had a lot. Of, do you know? I had a lot of uh, hope for Brunt. Yeah. Well, he was ready. We were ready for a promotion season. Started out, didn't start well. No. Lots of injuries. People didn't seem to be coming back from injuries. Broghammer out for the season in the in the the preseason. Bang, cruciate ligaments. Okay. Uh, right. Oh well, we still in ward. We trust. He's a uh, a, a big friend of the club. On we go. First half of the season, didn't get out of the bottom half. It's like, oh, this isn't really meant to happen. Uh, don't really know what's going on. The forum's full of it, you know, like, sort of <laughs> ward out, ward out, ward out. Bringing Daryl Clark uh, in the, the off-season as uh, assistant manager. Um, he looks to sort of have a set of tactics that look to be a little bit different to wards, yeah. but we're playing very defensively, but it's sort of, we look solid and I'm still very positive you know like sort of yep yep it's going to be good it's going to be good we're going to fire we uh, trade Elliot Richards for Alan Gow brilliant you know like Gow starts um, he seems to be the missing piece of the jigsaw really attacking we bring in Kaid Mohammed, really attacking very good yeah. looks like Ward's listening Gow gets injured out for the season oh okay at that point, we were pushing. We were in our minds anyway. We were still in the bottom half of the table, but we were pushing for the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the division was so <laughs> tight. It's like, oh yeah, push for the playoffs. Something at that period goes wrong. We'll get to the uh, furore on the forum later. Um, Norburn, the who looked like he was developing into a good player, suddenly disappears. Ellis Harrison suddenly disappears, and all of a sudden we're. We've been playing kids all season, but they've been doing well. All of a sudden, that seems to be all we have. Yeah. And things we start losing, losing game after game. We go on big runs, losing. Torquay come, who are bottom of the table, at that point, looked like they were going to get relegated with 10 games to, or well, six games to they, go. I mean, they, they were they were pretty much on their way. They, how many points? They were like 10 points behind everyone. Or yeah, something, I mean, it? at that point, it was like, oh, you have to win every game. Yeah. We lose to them in one of the worst displays that people have seen in a long, long time. Mm. And all of a sudden, it's real. You know, <laughs> like, we, we could actually get forget the playoffs, obviously. Now we're looking down. Ward seems to not be at home. He seems to be a little bit <laughs> out to lunch. More on the forum later. Um, and all of a sudden, things look really bad. There's... A, at that point I think everybody loses patience with Ward he's just saying the wrong things yeah. all he's saying is that the fans need to get behind the team and finally even I a tinter as the as the forum would say snap and, and say right this is terrible Ward needs to sort it out Higgs listens to the fans and uh, but does it in a weird way puts Daryl Clark as manager kicks John Ward upstairs as director of football Clark immediately comes out and says, criticises the old regime, yeah. says that we were too defensive, that we um, didn't sort of uh, commit enough people forward. John Ward's supposedly director of football still. What's going on there? We start losing more, whereas we were at least we were winning at home and always losing. I think we only won one game away. Yeah. Um, we start losing at home as well. Comes to a point, Portsmouth... I listened to it on the radio. Uh, Clark starts out, got Woodards and Michael Smith on the wing, uh, which is something that we've been talking about for two years. Two great right backs playing both on the wing, yeah. you know, and have them. Uh, Smith's really good at crossing, he's probably our best player. Uh, it all looks good, you know, like it's a must win for Portsmouth. The atmosphere is rocking. Um, in the first half, both Woodards and Smith get injured out for the season. And I think, with hindsight, that was the point that I switched from thinking all we need to do is just buck up and perform mm. better to we're actually now a bottom three side yeah. that's fighting for their lives. 
And then <coughs> on we go. We get to Wickham. Me and my brother went. Um, for those in the know, there's a famous picture of me and my brother <laughs> circulating <laughs> around, uh, talking of Paulie Octopus. I've got it on my... Uh... <laughs> There you go. It's my screensaver on my phone. I've had it for a while now. I see you every day. I look like someone out of Doctor Who. I think. <laughs> but um, and we go there, and we win. I I'll always remember it. I was right there. Clarkson just ghosted around a little bit of class. Clarkson stepped up to the plate. Got no criticism of him. Yeah. Uh, John Joe O'Toole mm. had to be dropped from the side because he was obviously very disappointed about the way the season has gone. Didn't hide it. Um, I think even he with hindsight would say that he needed to hide it a little bit more play the game a little bit more mm. I appreciate honesty but come as, on as with all things in football I basically believe in football things should be completely different to the way that I believe <laughs> things should be in the rest of the world I believe in strong leaders in football <laughs> and people workers doing what they're told in football <laughs> not really in the other one so um Wickham, amazing, amazing. You know, there was a pitch invasion and I was like, really, it, it ruined it for me, but only from a paranoid aspect because I was worried. We'd already been told that we were on our last warning and if we got deducted points, it'd be a nightmare. So, you know, like I, I was, even by then, I was horrifically on edge. Yeah. And then we come to the last game of the season. The other two teams need to uh, lose uh, or in order to keep it on our own hands, we need to win. Yeah. Just before the game starts, it's announced Lee Brown's injured. So we've got basically two out of the normal back four. And we go into the game. It was sad. It was just, <laughs> oh, it was just terrible. So by, by half time, um, Wickham and Northampton were safe. Uh, yeah. Two nil up and two one up. So we then had to win. Yeah. It, you know, we had to score a goal. St Paul's Carnival at halftime. That was just that so was a jar blackout. Was oh, it? Dear, you know, terrible. I mean, I felt sorry for him, but it was. You know, it was nice. Gone on, it was know, nice having it? all the St Paul's lot up there. Yeah. They were doing food and this sort of thing. But halftime, you know, in a in a really important game like that, you know, if you're going to have a halftime show, yeah, make it something like Eye of the Tiger yeah. or you know something bit of Dr. Meeker hype people up a bit yeah. do not make it dub do not dub is not what we needed no. I, I was having a fag and I was hearing the dub and I was thinking god I'm effing miserable yeah <laughs> like, and it was just like I was just so nervous so nervous you've got to remember this is for those non-football I doubt anyone non-football still listening but um, <laughs> this is relegation out of the football league into the conference the biggest disaster if it happened to face the club yeah. in, in its 130 odd year history um, and uh, half time comes everyone's sick with nerves yeah. and they've got this sort of dub crew on trying to hype everybody up and I just felt sorry for them I mean the crowd broke into goodnight Irene and I think the thing behind that was just just leave us alone right yeah. now you know like everyone was really happy to see St Paul's there like you said and it's nothing against them it's completely bad handling. It was just the wrong timing. Yeah, just, it's like it's like when you're upset and you just say, "No, just leave me alone." Yeah, just leave me alone, mate. And they go, "No, it'll be all right. I can Come help. On, it'll be yeah. all right. It'll be fine." But like, no, just, just give me five minutes. And then the second half starts, and it just oh, got worse God. and worse, didn't it? You know, it's just more and more nervous. And and the, uh, and there was so we were playing Mansfield in the Mansfield away end. Uh, Bristol City fans were in there. Probably we we reckon 20. about. 20 or 30 maybe Mansfield had, a, had a, a crew down as well so they might be mixed in with that but yeah there was definitely City fans in there and um, we've talked about it before last time we went down to Wickham um, there were City fans in the end there as well and uh, it's just I, you know I've been talking to City fans ever since and, and they've been good as gold you know like they'll have a little dig a little laugh but then they, they, they're they football people they know what I'm going through yeah, and uh, that but to go in uh, the away end as a casualty vampire and uh, do that, barely human for me. They yeah. are barely human. You know, I, I ain't City just as much as uh, as the next man, <laughs> like, you know, but it's not something I, 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 I wouldn't do it, you know. It's, I mean, it's, obviously it's, it was all fired up from the derby, uh, the, yeah. the derby we had before, but even so, you know, like anyone who does that, you need, really need to take a long, hard look at yourself because... You've gone wrong somewhere in my eyes. So the game uh, ended. 
game ended, we lost. I walked out straight you away. You walked out straight Hated away. Hated every single person in there. Fans, players, chairman, everybody just had to get out. I, uh, I stayed... I stayed on the terrace for a bit, just, you know, people crying, mm -hmm. you know, because you've got that rush of emotion throughout the whole game of yeah. willing the result, you know, willing something to change and then it not. And uh, it was it was very emotional, very emotional. People so fa fans went on the pitch first of all, out of, the, out of the... I think at the start, everyone was like, no one goes on the pitch because... It's sort of, uh, you know, we could face a points deduction and, and big problems. We'd, we'd been gone past our final warning at that stage. There was some Egypt ran on before the end of the game. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, what? But I've got no problem with people going on the pitch at the end of the game because we were, we were done by then. But, well, yeah, people what were we going to lose? Angry, quite yeah, rightly. and people went on the pitch. They went on to hurl abuse at the uh, board. And, Box number one. You know, wanted yeah. the board out. Uh, and then went for the city fans. Yeah, and that uh, was where you, you seen those pictures of like the real kickoffs. That was it was basically gas heads. I mean, what? Well, no, there wasn't anything. The, the the kickoff was when the police were attacking people. The police attacked this lad. Three. Yeah, of that's them. what I mean. The, oh, the, right. the police sort of formed the cordon around the city fans because uh, obviously these twenty superheroes couldn't actually face. Uh, a crowd of 600 people going towards them so they had to rely on the police and then the police as the police do kicked off hard didn't yeah. they you know like they're beating the crap out of people well I saw three of them uh, beat this guy to the ground like yeah that's but yeah it wasn't nice and What's then the Kelt song <laughs> hey, 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 me. Um, all cops are bastards well, speaking of all cops are bastards, hashtag Nick Gargan. <laughs> <laughs> you sertsy old man. So, uh, yeah, that that was sort of... Um, and then ever since, it, it's been this, this mad thing of, like, rev revelations coming out on the forum about what the, what actually happened in the season. And um, I've got no problem with people making allegations on there, to be honest, because I believe them all. Yeah. And I think the fans should know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but in classic North Korean style, what the club have done is close the forum. So there, there was there was allegations. There People was, were taking drugs. There was allegations uh, that players were taking drugs, and selling, selling drugs, drugs. Each other, got caught selling drugs, and the club covered it up. Um, the and the, uh, the, uh, the the physio wasn't very good. They'd be sending them down to the gym to look after themselves, basically. I mean, I noticed that there was a, a fitness uh, consultant or something like that that's just been sacked. Is like what we actually had a fitness consultant, you know. Like <laughs> there were so many injuries during the season that, um, yeah, someone's got to carry the can for that. Yeah, but basically the the whole thing and it really made me angry at Ward because the whole thing showed that there's been a really lax atmosphere at the club where people have turned up to training allegedly still on one. Uh, people have missed training. People have been handing in transfer request after transfer request. Um, there's been huge disharmony in the dressing room. All of this on Ward's watch. And then Ward came out at the end of the season and started doing interviews. He did an interview for Five Live. And it's like, you have got to go. Yeah. You've, got, you've got to get out of it before anything else can happen. You've got to get out of this club. You know, you've been a great servant to it. And, you know, the Ward of the 90s and all that was... was legendary you know like and like i said last season great this season he's absolutely effed it up yeah and he had to go and the fact that he was sacked rather than walked a dark stain on his character basically because yeah. if he really loved the club he would have walked strong words well i feel strongly about well, it i can it, tell you know, i can like, tell and, and now daryl clark in the conference i yeah he cares i you know i got a bit yeah. of bit of faith in him you could tell he you know you look at the reactions of Clark afterwards and Hig Higgs is the uh, chair of the board but you look at them they both get interviewed after the game they're on YouTube like Clark he's devastated. Uh, devastated you know he's crying you know you can see and you know he says I take responsibility I'm the one who picked the players yeah. for the last eight games which you know I always took that as a suggestion of he knew what some of the players were up to and still put them out but you know had to had to yeah. you know like we ran whereas, out of players whereas yeah. you look at Higgs cold it's all business 
you know mm. yeah, yeah so um i think he felt it you know like but um it's just i think to sort of sum it all up the way that i feel is um it is what it is you know like sort of we're in the conference now that can't change you know that that's a reality yeah um everyone's saying um oh you, you've got to be humble about it and you've got to think the five years f you yeah. we're, we're getting out <laughs> next season you know like you're not going to take that from me <laughs> Um, and I think that we should. You know, there's no reason why we shouldn't. We'll, we'll have the biggest playing budget down there, or one of the biggest. Um, we've kept a lot of good players, um, and we've got a lot of uh, academy players that are coming through. Yeah. Um, we've got a coach that that should do well at that level, and I think we'll, if he can, you know, get success, we'll, we'll be there for a while. But the big thing that that I've had to do is take all my dreams and pack them in a box and put them away and that's just such a hard thing to do you know like if we'd have stayed up we would have had the new stadium in a couple of years well until some arsehole seems to think that a proper tribute to dead soldiers is to have an empty park yeah um what makes you think you know anything about what those people wanted or yeah. even what the people that built you're a middle class lecturer don't lecture me on yeah. what the working class of the 1920s wanted <laughs> Um, but yeah, the, 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 that's the biggest thing is just there's a complete. Whereas before, I thought get this season out of the way, we'll push on. We could be League One, we could be Championship in this new stadium. Everything's going to now. All those hopes and dreams have had to be packed away until we get out of the conference. And it's I've got a season ticket for next season. Yeah. You know, like, um, and I'll be there and I'll support the team, but. I've got no dreams anymore. And that's oh, <laughs> well, I think we do need a night on the month then, don't we? Oh, we do, we do. <laughs>